How's it going guys? It's Kyle with the How To Guy 123 here, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to emulate PlayStation 3 games on the PC using the RPCS3 emulator. Before we begin, I'll put the system requirements for RPCS3 on screen now. It's a good idea to make sure that your PC meets these system requirements, as RPCS3 and PS3 emulation can be a little bit system intensive. The recommended requirements are for running all playable games with a playable performance. The minimum requirements are for being able to run any games at all, but there's no performance or stability guarantees. Let's begin by downloading RPCS3. I'll leave a link to RPCS3's official website in the description below. Once you're on the homepage, click on download and you'll be redirected to the downloads page. You can see that we can download RPCS3 for several platforms, Windows, Mac, and Linux, but this tutorial is going to focus on Windows, so I'm going to click download under Windows. Once you click download, save RPCS3 anywhere on your computer. I'll put it on my desktop for easy access. It's not a very big file, so it shouldn't take too long to download. RPCS3 will download in a 7-zip archive, and we'll need to use an archive extraction program to extract it. I like to use WinRAR, but you can use a free program like 7-zip to extract the archive. Right-click on the archive and choose the option that says Extract to RPCS3, the version number, and ends in a backslash. This will extract the contents of the archive to its own folder. Now that the archive is done extracting, you can see that I have this folder on my desktop, and we can now open it. When you open up the folder, you'll see all the RPCS3 files. Now look for RPCS3.exe and double-click on it to open up the emulator itself. A welcome window will first appear with some information about the emulator as well as a recommendation to check out the quick start guide in order to get RPCS3 up and running. Check I have read the quick start guide as I am basing this tutorial off the quick start guide. Then click continue and RPCS3 will fully open up. We now need to install the PlayStation 3 firmware onto RPCS3. I'll leave a link in the description below to where you can download the latest firmware. The firmware comes from the official PlayStation website. Click on the download button to download the firmware. However, if you are using a browser like Google Chrome, if you try and click on the download button, nothing will happen. So I recommend copying the link and opening it up in another browser like Microsoft Edge. Now if I click download, Edge will bring up a warning stating that the firmware cannot be downloaded securely. Just click on the three dots beside it and select keep, then keep anyways, and the firmware will start to download. Don't worry, the file is safe and virus free since we are downloading it from the official Sony or PlayStation website. The download might take a few minutes to complete. Once the firmware has finished downloading, I'm going to move the file onto my desktop just to keep all my RPCS3 files together. Now head back into RPCS3, then click on File, then Install Firmware, and select the firmware file we just downloaded. RPCS3 will begin to install the firmware. And when it's done, it should bring up a window that says successfully installed PS3 firmware and LLE modules. Click on OK, then RPCS3 will need to do some compiling, and this part might take a few minutes. Great, RPCS3 has finished compiling. Next, let's set up and configure our controller. On the top bar, click on Pads, and this will bring up the Gamepad Settings window. Under Handlers, click on the drop-down and select the controller you would like to play your PS3 games with. You can use a keyboard, but for the best experience, I recommend using a controller. RPCS3 supports a wider range of controllers, for example, DualShock 3, which is for a PS3 controller, DualShock 4, which is for a PS4 controller, DualSense, which is a PS5 controller, as well as X Input, which is for Xbox or generic PC controllers. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using a PS5 controller, so I'll select DualSense. I already have my PS5 controller connected to my PC through Bluetooth, but you can also connect your controller to your computer with a USB cable. Under Devices, you can see that my DualSense pad number 1 is detected. If I press the triggers on my controller, the trigger threshold slider moves. Also, if I move these sticks on the controller, you can see movement under the analog stick dead zone section. Feel free to remap the controller buttons if you would like, but I'm going to leave everything default here. Now click Save to close the gamepad settings window. Now let's go ahead and add our games. I won't go into depth on how to get games in this tutorial, but to avoid piracy, you should be emulating the games you already own, whether they're disc-based or digital downloads on your PS3. I recommend reading the RPCS3 Quick Start Guide, which explains how to dump your games to your PC. 
There are two good ways to dump your games. The first is to have a PlayStation 3 with custom firmware to transfer digital or disc-based games to your PC through FTP. The second, and in my opinion, simplest method is to use a Blu-ray drive that is connected to your PC to rip the game directly from the disc. I'll also leave some really good videos in the description below on how to dump games to your PC. To import your games into RPCS3, go up to File, Add Games, then locate the folder that contains all of your PlayStation 3 games. So in my case, it's on my E drive, Games, and I have a folder called PS3 Games, which contains all of my PlayStation 3 games. So I'm going to open up the folder, then I'm going to click Select Folder, and this will import every single game in my PS3 Games folder into RPCS3. Next, we can configure our RPCS3 settings to make sure that our games run as smoothly as possible. To open the settings, click on config in the top bar. Under the CPU tab, leave everything default unless you know what you're doing. Moving on to the GPU tab, leave the renderer set to Vulkan. This will give you the best performance in game with the least number of graphical glitches. However, if you are having some performance issues or graphical glitches, you can try and set the renderer to OpenGL and see if that fixes any problems. But for most games and most situations, you're going to want to leave the renderer set to Vulkan. Next, if you want to increase your game's resolution to 1080p for example, you're not going to want to touch the default resolution dropdown. Leave this set to 1280x720. You're going to want to set your game resolution with the resolution scale slider. So to play your game in 1080p, increase the slider from 100% to 150%. Just keep in mind that increasing the resolution scale will lower the performance of your game. So if you're having some performance issues, try lowering the resolution scale even below 100% or 720p. However, I have a very good computer and I like to emulate my games in 1440p. So I'm going to increase the resolution scale to 200% or 2560 by 1440. Other than that, I leave all of the other settings at default and I just skip right to the emulator tab. Here, you can customize the emulator to your liking. For example, you can have your games boot in full screen at launch, as well as enable the performance overlay to monitor your game's frame rate and how well it's running. Now that we're done configuring our settings, click on apply and save to exit out of the settings window. Next, I want to talk about game compatibility. On the right side of RPCS3 is a compatibility column which will indicate how well your games can be emulated. Playable means that your games can be completed and will perform well with no game breaking glitches. Games in the in-game category mean that they are somewhat playable but might not be able to be finished or have serious glitches and poor performance. Over 67% of games in the PlayStation 3 game library are in the playable category and 28% are in the in-game category, which means that most games should be able to be emulated without any issue. If we head back to the RPCS3 website and click on the compatibility tab, we can check if a specific game can be emulated. In this case, I'll search for LittleBigPlanet. Now look for the version of LittleBigPlanet you want to emulate, whether that is the disc-based or digital version of the game. I have the disc version of the game, and you can see that it's in the playable category. If we click on the game, this will redirect you to a wiki page which will recommend the best settings to emulate the game with for the best performance and least number of glitches. If we head back into RPCS3, right click on LittleBigPlanet and choose create a custom configuration, a settings window will open and here we can set custom settings specifically for LittleBigPlanet. The wiki recommends going to the GPU tab and disabling anti-aliasing and also enabling right color buffers. It also recommends going into the Advanced tab and enabling Silence All Logs. Now click Apply and Save, and as I mentioned before, every time I boot up Little Big Planet, it will launch with the custom settings that we just created. Keep in mind that not all games have recommended settings on their wiki pages. The final thing we're going to need to do before we launch our game is to check for any game patches. Certain games have patches available to improve emulation performance, add features like increased FOV or change settings such as running the game in a higher frame rate, resolution, or aspect ratio if you want to play the game on an ultra wide monitor. In RPCS3, click on Manage, then Game Patches. The patch manager will open and will ask you if you want to update your patch file. Click Yes and RPCS3 will download the latest patches. When it's done, it will say that your patch file is up to date, so click on OK. You'll see a list of all the games that have available patches. 
To shorten the list to show only games that you own, check only show owned games. This might be a bad example as I don't have any games with available patches, so I'll uncheck only show owned games and use Call of Duty 3 as an example. I do own Call of Duty 3, but the patch is for the European version of the game. Call of Duty 3 has one patch to extend the field of view, so check the box for any patches you want to use, then click on apply and save to apply the patch. But in my case, I'll just click cancel. Additionally, from the manage dropdown, you can also manage your user accounts, save data, and trophies. We can now finally launch our game. In this example, I'll play Burnout Paradise. Click on the game you want to play, then click play on the top bar. By default, the game will boot in window mode, and the emulator will need to do some compiling. This usually takes about a minute. In the meantime, if you want to full screen your game, press Alt and Enter. And there we go, we are emulating the PlayStation 3 edition of Burnout Paradise on the PC. Due to copyright issues with the in-game music, I'm going to mute the game audio in video, but the sound is working just fine. The game runs very smooth and consistently stays around 60fps even when the game is running at 1440p. So far, I haven't run into any glitches or issues while playing Burnout Paradise. Credit to the developers for creating this amazing emulator. I can't imagine that it was easy to make due to the unique architecture of the PlayStation 3's CPU. It's also amazing the sheer number of games that can be emulated without any issues, along with the consistency that RPCS3 is updated. Anyways, that brings us to the end of the tutorial. If this video helped, please leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to help you guys out. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.